right now we're standing on an inlet and if the camera can pan around and just show us the panorama here this is Beaufort Inlet and so we're right outside of Moorhead City in Beaufort and across the inlet as the camera sweeps you can see Shackleford Banks and if we're not as hazy you could see the Cape Lookout Lighthouse in the distance and that's a lighthouse that has diamonds on it if anybody's ever seen the North Carolina lighthouses that's right and uh, that's actually across the inlet is the beginning of the National Seashore. Right now we're on a state park and across the inlet is a federal park. So we're at one tip of a barrier island and a barrier island is always kind of framed by two inlets on either side. So we're right here on Beaufort. Now what's interesting about barrier islands and a lot of folks have talked about rising sea level and sea level has been coming up for about 18,000 years since the last ice age. And what's neat about barrier islands is they are formed in part by rising sea level. So what we're standing on is a product of what's been happening for thousands and thousands of years as the ocean has slowly come up the, the continental shelf. So the sand is kind of built up and the islands rise up in elevation and move back a little bit, a little more landward. So it's kind of exciting to think that uh, we're on such a dynamic area. So I'm gonna ask the kids here, do you, do you feel like we're on a really stable island that it's not moving? Yes. 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 I guess it's all your relative time scale, right? So um, a snail is slow and a turtle is slow, but a snail is much slower than a turtle. So in geologic time, this island is actually moving really fast um, because it's moving actually daily, but it's moving grain by grain. So if you've ever come out to the beach on a really windy day, have you all been out to the beach and gotten sand in your hair and your eyes? And uh, if you ever see some of the, uh, the newscasters that are over in the Middle East and get caught in sandstorms and they've got to wear the goggles and sometimes you can't even see them, that's the wind that blows the sand along. So every time the wind or the water moves a grain of sand, the island changes. So geologically, we're on a very unstable island, although to all of us it seems like it's not going to move at all. So it's kind of a trick question. You guys were right, but as a geologist, we think in, in thousands and millions of years. So, what are, you, what are you standing on? We'll ask the kids here. Sand. 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 Yep. All three got it right. We're on sand. And it's really neat because I, I mentioned that this island moves and I really want to prove it to you. So we're going to go over here to a hole I've dug earlier. The camera can swing around here. And I want you to focus in on the layers that you see in the hole. And hopefully what you'll notice is that you've got different colors in there. And if you could get out here and look up close, hold it in your hand, you'd notice that some of those layers were really coarse material and others were really fine material. And the fact that they're in nice little thin layers shows that the sand is always moving from storms and wave activity and high tides and wind. And so it is a very dynamic place. And these layers really uh, could have formed in the period of just a couple days. Um, it's hard to come out here and actually measure them. These are probably weeks and months, but the sands can shift so rapidly uh, that sometimes this will build up in a single tidal cycle. Well, and I'm, <clears throat> that gives us a good chance to ask. We're standing here and can get a good picture of the beach, and I know it's, it may be a little hard for the students to see, I mean, on camera, but Ben and Kira and Jada, let me ask you, we're here at low tide. Remember, we talked about that when we were over on the Rachel Carson Reserve a while ago. Do you think where we're standing now the tide will come up sometime today? Yes. You think so, Kara? Yes. Okay, so when Jeff talks about the tides moving the sand and so forth, we are in the intertidal zone here. And there's something you can always check to see where the last high tide was. So we'll slowly walk with the camera and we'll kind of show you some of the geologic evidence we look for on the ground. And it's, we look for what's called swash marks. And they really kind of look like it's the last place the wave was. And we're not going to walk backwards too far. We'll end up in the ocean. <laughs> and I was going to say, and try not to step on the swash marks. <laughs> well, here's some, some examples right along here. If the camera can pan down the beach, and I'm going to go and kind of follow them and point them out with my hand. So I'm going to be away from the microphone really quick. Okay, so he's pointing out some of the swash marks. Kind of looks like a a zigzag. Can, can y'all see that? Ben, can you see that? Yes. Okay. So you're getting a good idea of, of where some of the wave marks are. 
Yeah, and this is, you know, you see some of these coarser shell layers and the finer layers. Um, so it's, it's a little difficult to see unless you really kind of get a, a large scale view, a bird's eye view and stand back. Now, if we walk closer down to the water's edge, which I think we can do without getting wet, we'll show you what some recent swash marks look like where the waves have just hit uh, a minute or two ago. Uh, this is cool. We can get a good view of the, the waves um, right now. Uh, this is awesome. We can see a good one. Ben, I bet you could even find this one. Can you show us where one of them is? That's right. He's, Ben's walking right along it. You can see where it's nice and smooth, where it's uh, nice and dimpled here. It kind of looks like uh, sandpaper, doesn't it? Or sometimes you have those textured ceilings at your house. Now, I can actually tell you right here where Ben is, that's where high tide was last. Now the tides, sometimes you have higher high tides and lower high tides, and it depends what time of the month you are and how full the moon is, because the moons really affect the tides. So what do you think made the rough spots here on this sand? Jada, do you know, Kara, what happened last night? It rained. It rained. That's right. These are actually raindrop marks in the rough area. And we know that it hasn't rained since last night. So that was the last time it could make that texture pattern. And then the waves came up and smoothed over the other areas. So enough time has, has really, not enough time has passed to really smooth this out and for the wind to blow it around. So you can still see the raindrop patterns. And sometimes these patterns are preserved in the geologic record, which are really cool because you can look at rocks that are millions of years old and actually see raindrop imprints. Or sometimes when the mud dries out and you see the mud cracks, sometimes those will get preserved too. But this is a great indicator. Next time you go to the beach, this, these are just a couple of things you can look at to read the beach. So we've got the swash marks and the point of the last high tide. And then of course we've got the raindrop marks from all the rain that we had yesterday and last night. So it's really kind of neat. Now there's another thing on this beach that probably doesn't look so natural. And I'm going to ask if our students here can point it out. Rock. Right, now what do you think those rocks are? We'll have the camera swing around. And maybe you saw it before when we panned the inlet. But do you see anything in that picture that may look a little unnatural? Well, some people might call that a jetty, but it's actually a groin. And it's an engineered structure. Um, the Army actually went out there and piled the rocks up to keep this part of the island from eroding because we are at Fort Macon. It's a state park and it's a, it's a historic site. It's a site of uh, a fort that was taken over during the Civil War by the Confederates. And there was an erosion problem right here at the inlet. The inlets are some of our most dynamic areas on the coast. A lot of erosion. The inlets like to move back and forth. Uh, if you look at the geologic record, inlets will close and reopen down the beach or maybe up the beach. Um, so to take care of this erosion problem, they've piled these boulders up to help keep the sand in place. So that's actually something that we can't do anymore in North Carolina because we've got a law in place that doesn't allow us to put anything out that would disrupt the natural flow of sand on the ocean front, which is really a great law that helps our beaches just kind of maintain their natural appearance. So when you go down our ocean front, um, with the exception of a few historic structures that were in place before the laws were passed, you won't see any concrete walls or any bulkheads or any groins or uh, you'll see a couple jetties down south, but those were in place uh, before the law was passed.